What makes Curator so special? This video has been updated with Vulnerability Manager and Trustier. So any SIEM out there has a correlation engine that takes input typically from logs and with that correlation produces what some of them call incidents or they call them cases we prefer to call those offenses but what's the problem with that technology well the problem there are several problems number one is that this thing takes forever to deploy People, you need to have people with PhDs on tools and you need to have several of them, which these days is actually something very expensive. Yet, in spite of all that investment and time, you have another problem, which is that they produce lots of false positives. Gives you, you know, 200, 300 things that you should do you cannot deal with 200 or 300 things especially if you when you are dealing with those things you find out that those things are really normal stuff and yet in, in spite of all those false positives they miss a lot of important things and we'll see that that is mainly because they lack context to make the determination of what is important and what is it's not important. Finally, these technologies are not much help with uh, APTs and fraud. They are those differently. For once, from the very beginning, Curator has been very good at incorporating into this correlation engine flows. Um, you'll see that flows provide a great deal of context. What, what are flows? Well, flows are, first of all, the, the nomenclature, it, uh, Cisco calls them end flows. Juniper calls them end flows. Some of the people call them S flows. Today there's a an, an standard called IP fix. But all these are layer actually layer four and layer two data. This is this is what tells you whether something is going out your network and going to a particular country of interest or not. You're not gonna get that out of the plain logs. This is a bus of information that routers and switches produce extremely helpful for doing investigation. We don't stop there. We also have something that we call Qflow, which is we take the first 64 bytes by default, or 64 bytes of the every incoming traffic, every incoming packet, and we see its content. So this is actually layer 7 analysis of what's going there. So we can tell, well, this is RC traffic. This is a uh, PDF going out. This is, you know, uh, this or that type of particular traffic. We don't stop there. We also deal with a problem, which which is a technology that we call B flows, and this has to do with the fact that when you use something like VMware, and all that communication that typically will go in through routers, all this you know layer four and, and layer two traffic, uh, it's going to go through the hypervisor so it's not going to be seen well we actually have a uh, a hook into the VMware APIs and we collect that data in spite of you doing virtualization so we take all that flow and we give that additional context into everything we do but there's more we can do we have an asset database that is integral to everything we do and with that asset database let me show you some of the things that we have in there. For once is that we, we have automatic detection 
of devices and servers. And Curator started from a, from a networking perspective from the very beginning. So for us, it's always been very easy to detect, well, this is the HCP type of traffic. So this might be a DHCP server. Well, here's some FTP, might be a FTP server. DNS, same thing, mail, same thing. And this allows us to provide a great deal of context. So for example, if we see a workstation sending a ton of email, and we know it is not a mail server because it doesn't use a mail server protocol, we may think that that machine is uh, being used for spam, you know. This also simplifies tremendously the deployment because no longer you have to sit down and put all the IP addresses of all the devices, of the devices you know, many of them you don't know, but actually because we do that detection automatically, our database is always up to date. Whenever a new thing comes in, we see what it's doing, we identify and we present it to you and say, whoa, we discovered a new database being, being launched. Did you know about it? We also add into the asset database user information. It is very lame to, to report on IP addresses, but it's more useful when we say this particular user was using that IP address at the moment of the event. How do we know that? We monitor Active Directory and any other web login that the user may be doing, and then we attach that at that particular time, this was the user behind me there. We look at the DHCP logs and that help us with that. We also take input from our IPSs and we take IPS data, in particular our IPSs can now do IP fix directly, and reach application information. We know, you know, when is uh, the data going to uh, Facebook or any kind of social site. So we say, well, this is Facebook traffic and we see a user posting data and we, this is the data the user posts, you know, we, we can do all that. We also take from Guardium we protect your databases without collecting any logs. We take information from Guardian on what is it blocking or what is it warning. So this provides a tremendous uh, level of context on database data. We do a similar job with the mainframe in which you don't have to bring the SMF records into your SIEM and flood your SIEM with those, but we can have C-Secure actually filter those. We also have in the asset database IP reputation now. So we have the from our feeds from IP reputation, we can detect things like, uh, well, this IP address is a botnet, or this is a malware site. Well, that brings tremendous content, isn't it, to whatever offense we are reporting for that device. This is a user going through an anonymous proxy, kind of a, the tort network and why is it doing that? We know about IPs that are scanning IPs, searching for targets of opportunities. And we not only look at a particular IP address, but we also look at IP address by range. So we look at dynamic ranges for IPs. We know about uh, spam sites and, you know, far more data that is very useful from the IP reputation standpoint. We take inputs from our identity management component and our access management component. So you, we can detect failed logins and, you know, uh, from, from, from that device at the DMC. We take input from vulnerability scanners. So it makes a lot of sense to, if we see SQL injection type of traffic going to a particular IP address that we know that is vulnerable to SQL injection, we're going to make a big deal and give a, a great deal of relevance to that offense. We don't stop there. We added a component to Curator called Risk Manager. And what is it that is addressing? Well, when you ask questions, am I susceptible to SNMP attacks, for example? The answer, if you ask that to somebody, the answer is going to be, well, I need to see the configuration of your SNMP. So what, what Risk Manager is going to take is configuration info from devices and uh, components like firewalls, routers, and others. And it's going to feed that into this module and it's going to allow you to do several things. For once, you can do simulation and see, well, what, is, what if we get this type of particular attack? 
how far will it propagate? It also is going to be bringing into your SIEM topology information. In fact, some people love it because they can get detailed visual files of their current uh, state of their network. And because we have that asset database that detects those things automatically, those charts are always up to date. But we can also do even more things, like uh, we can detect uh, things like uh, firewall configuration that are on error. We can detect ineffective firewall rules, etc. So we can do that, all that by looking not only on the logs, not only on the flows, but now the configuration of your devices. And that gives us a tremendous level of detail. Context, again, that eliminates the false positives. And all these is what allows us to do some very smart filtering and take being able to take billions and we have customers with billions of events every day what do I do with those billions of events well if I provide good enough context I can reduce that massive list of things into just a handful of offenses that you people need to deal with. You need to re-image that box, you need to change the setup of that particular IP address, you need to you know, do specific things. And you people can deal with a handful of offenses, not with billions of events. That's what Curator has been doing so well for so long. We don't stop there. We recently added a vulnerability manager and scanner into Curator. You may say, well, if there are so many good vulnerability scanners out there, in fact, I cannot even fix all the things that those vulnerability scanners uh, produce. Why do you want to bring another one? Well, let me show you why, and you will understand why we came up with this component. For once, if we take any data that you may have from any other scanner out there, there are many good ones, but they are not, you'll see that they are not attached to, a, to an asset database. We also take more, even more vulnerabilities. You say, well, you cannot deal with all those. Well, here, here, here there are even more. So we can take vulnerabilities from Guardian. Guardian is actually very good out of looking at a database configuration and detect vulnerabilities that any other scanner will definitely miss. We take input from AppScan which is going to do a far better detail analysis on the vulnerabilities of your web application. We now take data from Trustier, which is so good at of protecting your endpoint. And what we do is that we, we have a very good integration with Site Protector now, which is the console for our, our IPSs. And we can do a good analysis that will tell your, your IPS to say, well, I know I found a, a SQL injection vulnerability. I know IPS for the way that you are located. You can actually, if you turn that protection on, I will be immune to that. So please help me with that, those type of things. And what we're going to be producing is, think of it as your vulnerabilities display in this way. You're going to get a, a large group of those vulnerabilities that are what we call inactive. Let's say you have an SNMP vulnerability. Because of the way that you have configured your system, you are vulnerable to that. But we see that that device is actually inactive. You don't have SNMP on. We don't see any flows that indicate that there is such a traffic being used. So you should fix those, and for compliance reasons, you, you definitely need to fix them. But for now, relax. There are all the bigger things for you to worry about than that. And that takes a great deal of uh, load out of your uh, compliant efforts if you know that uh, those things are 
not active. We also are very good at detecting what is being patched, both from the scanner perspective and from things like Big Fix, our endpoint protection that can tell us what are the things that are actually patched and say, well, those things are patched, don't even worry about it. Those are things of the past. Because of that integration that we have with Site Protector, we can say, well, these things are actually being blocked by your IPS, in some cases, but the firewall, and therefore, don't worry about those. And we're going to leave you with a smaller set of things that are really at risk. Because the feed we have from X4s, CVEs, and other sources, you know, we know that in your particular system, these things are ready for a hacker to exploit. And you should worry about that. And we also will show you another bucket of the things, and hopefully this is a small bucket, our network anomaly detection has detected that, for example, yeah, you had SQL injection, and there's evidence of SQL injection traffic in there, so your machine has actually been compromised. So that, and a few other things that we also actually do, it's probably worth mentioning that when we find our asset database, you know, that is so good, we, we spoke before about the asset database, and actually, I should have highlighted that this provides a great deal of context again. And when the asset database det detects that there is a new device, you can have a rule that says, well, scan it. You see, the problem with the scanning is that you do scanning once a month, typically. You know, some companies don't, don't even do it that frequently. Why? Well, because this stuff is, is massive. It takes so much time and so much network traffic that you don't do this ad hoc. You, do, you plan for these things. But what happens if you have a new device, well, and it's vulnerable? If I don't, I will have to wait for the next round of scanning in order to detect that the device is actually vulnerable. Not with QBM. QBM can actually, as soon as the device come in, go ahead and scan only that particular device without generating any more trouble. Let's say that you get new vulnerabilities. Uh, a new Java vulnerability, which is a weekly event almost these days. Uh, well, I'm going to scan the devices that that are that have that that component and see uh, uh, which and the asset database will actually even tell you which are the devices that are vulnerable to that particular new vulnerability and because we have topology information that we get from risk manager we is actually very useful to see well this this uh, vulnerability how close is from my dmc how close is from this sensitive database we also whenever we sus we see a suspicious device and we do that very well at Curator, we can actually see, well, what is that device now sending that type of traffic? I'm going to scan it. You can actually also, with QVM, scan your DMC from the outside. That gives you a different perspective than when you do it from the inside. You can do things like, well, I'm going to scan just my web servers. Because the asset database knows which you are, you can actually selectively scan those. You can actually have reference sets and do you know particular scannings of particular reference set of you know sensitive or risky devices you don't have to wait and do the, all this shotgun approach that you do with traditional uh, vulnerability scanners i also fail to mention that curera is very good at doing baseline analysis and we have two sliding windows, one of 24 hours and another one of seven days that we use to detect what is normal and what is not normal. So when we see workstation doing or endpoints or servers doing things that they, are, they didn't use, that on itself gives us some uh, relevance that we can use to correlate with the rest of the things and detect things that are not, uh, are not good. So in short, we, can see, we have seen that Curator it's actually very good at produ uh, producing and dealing with hot data, real time or near real time. Every minute, you know, we, we can detect the things that are actually happen. We tag the information very nicely with geo uh, uh, geolocation, with uh, user information, protocol use, etc. So we enrich the data. Our data is actually very structured data by nature. We are very good at detecting, you know, behavioral type of issues. Again, we do a master 
work with the flows, and our data is typically on the order of terabytes. But remember the point that I mentioned about not too much help with fraud and, and uh, IPTs? Now, for example, let's say the classical case of uh, the DNS forensic. I want to see, as an example, which of my users are going to bad sites because those are the few ones that generate so much trouble so you know I want to understand what they do and in fact I encourage you to do a, a, a Google search on YouTube uh, DNS forensic and curator and you'll find uh, a demonstration of that technology in action so I want to see you know what those users are well you need you cannot do that online because first of all the DNS doesn't give you much data it just, just gives you the IP address of the of the URL you're trying to go uh, but the registrar information on that is huge. How can I take advantage of that? Curera now has an extension with Big Insights, which is IBM's Hadoop implementation. And now we can take unstructured data. Like what? Well, for example, mail. And we can analyze mail for years. Social data who is actually sending what type of information with, with what. DNS registrar, as I mentioned before, tons of information about the site. What was the registry, uh, the, the site was registered last week? Hmm, that's very suspicious because that's what malware people do. Uh, you know, who's the registrar? Is this GoDaddy? Is this very site? It is China Post? You know, the, 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 I mean, all that thing is actually very, very, very important. I can actually add information from our sites so I can bring all that unstructured data into it but I can also feed definitely structured data and the data that curator produces is obviously a prime candidate for that that structure and enriched data into my analysis and I can do searches offline of course you know at the end of the day at the end of every day over long periods of time. So I want to see what are these people doing for you know for the last uh, two years and uh, and there's a technology called Big Sh that within uh, Big Insights, the Big Sheets that allows me to actually perform those analyses and this is data that is in the order of petabytes. This is this is massive. So uh, again I feed all that structured data in fact we, we use the JSON format to do that into into the big inside component and after all that analysis that can be actually improved by the usage of uh, tools like i2 let's say that let me pause for a second and talk about what i2 can do i2 can easily show you graphically things like who is connected to who it's what is called association analysis it's actually very nice in in, in case of fraud analysis. It can show you incidents timeline, so temporal analysis. What happened first and how this, for example, how this malware is started here and then propagated there. You can see the sequence of access, the, the actions. And actually it can show you incidents on a map. So you can see, make geo sense out of it. But the important thing is that you know you, you visualize all that and, and then all those findings that you get from from this analysis can be made out of reference sets that are fed back into curator and you can do new rules like for example increase the relevance of the of any action done by any one of these risky users that go to those bad sites. This is a short overview of what is it that we understand when we talk about security intelligence and what are the things that we keep on doing and adding into Curator to make it the center of it.